Vivian Lichtenstein from Elase de Familias and Jamie Rivera, her sidekick here for this uh, presentation. It's just a quick uh, idea in terms of what we're trying to do here. I'm just trying to let the public know the proposals that you have, uh, get an understanding of their benefits. And I also would like you to be in a position to explain if you, I know you have a couple of proposals. If you were able to get one, what the priority would be and why. Uh, and just the number of people you expect to serve and all of those kind of things. So, uh, and then we've got 15 minutes. Uh, we, she's on a timer. She's got a five minute warning and then I'll close you out. So Betty, thank you for coming. Is your mic on? The green button, the green light? Oh, oh okay. Okay. There you go. Good afternoon, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Betty Medina Lichtenstein, and I'm the executive director of Enlace de Familias. We have submitted two proposals. The priority, of course, would be the replacement of the roof at the 299 and 301 Main Street facility. Today, we have the um, secretary clerk for the board of directors, and I will turn it over to her for a minute, and then I'll come back. Okay, Jamie. Thank you again for having us here. My name is Jamie. I've been on the board at Adam Lasse for the past three years, and I am here today to um, represent the board and really support the proposal that has been um, placed before you in replacement of the roof. Um, over the past year or so, Enlace has been working towards purchasing the building, um, and we're in the process of doing that, um, along with needing a new roof. Um, and unfortunately, um, after looking at all of the numbers, we can't do both. Uh, and Enlace has been on Main Street for the past 25 years. We would like to stay at Main Street um, because that's where we feel we are um, the best location for um, the community of Hoyoke. Uh, if we are unable to do both, we would probably have to look elsewhere, and we don't want to do that. Okay. Thank you. We have asked for $100,000 that um, has come from a uh, independent appraiser um, for the roof. Um, we had gotten three bids, but um, this uh, individual said that given the time that the roof, ha the roof has been in disrepair, it will take more than what the visual, um, uh, what do you call it, um, the inspection thank you <laughs> the inspections are so the hundred thousand dollars he believes would take care of not only the replacement of the roof but then all the damage that it's done underneath that has created the potential of mold and mildew um, we have a um, family support center at this facility where families um, come to uh, get services, to get referrals, to participate in parenting uh, trainings and workshops. We are funded mostly by the state to provide these services. Um, our contract for the Family Resource Center is to service 1,000 families a year. Um, and we have had that contract now for three years and we hope to continue to have it. There is a, um, as long as we perform what we're supposed to, the contract will take us until 2025 and then it's gonna be put back out to bid, which we anticipate that we are in good standing with them. Um, we, we service, we could service um, up to probably 3,000 families a year that we've done in the past. As I mentioned last week, over the 25 years, we have serviced over 80,000 individuals, um, not families. The mm -hmm. state is looking for us to service up to 1,000 uh, per year. We want to stay there. There's been a great investment in this building. Um, we have expanded and then we shut down a little bit. We, didn't, we don't do daycare anymore, but the amount of space that that we have is adequate not only for our staff, but also the other agencies and programs that come and use the conference room. We also assist the Department of Children and Families with supervised visits. Um, there are many children here in this
nice uh, catchment area um, that are in foster care. And the parents need to have a safe and uh, environment for them to come to visit their children once a week. We have not been able to do that now, not only because of the pandemic, but because also um, the roof is in disrepair. Um, we run a number of youth programs, um, and so we want to be able to continue that. Our second proposal um, is about uh, meeting the housing needs um, that families have. Uh, I understand that today there was an extension on the eviction moratorium. However, we do not encourage um, or um, advise families to wait out the eviction moratorium, they're gonna find themselves in court. The sooner we're able to start working with them, pay, helping them pay, negotiate uh, what they owe, whether it be for an apartment or for their own home, um, with mortgage companies and banks, the, the sooner that we're able then to assist them with financial literacy. Um, we understand that many have lost their jobs, uh, employment because of the pandemic. On the other hand, there is a way to be able to catch up and to be able to continue to pay, whether it's the mortgage or um, the apartment, with some help from us. Those are the two proposals that we have in front of you. The priority, of course, is the roof. We want to be able to stay on Main Street and continue to service the families of Holyoke and also, of course, its children. The housing one, of course, it is a benefit. People want to stay in Holyoke. They do not want to have to move to other communities where maybe the rents are cheaper um, or that if they can't stay here, that's the only other place that they can go to. We want to be able to assist the homeowners, keep their um, the mortgage as well uh, in check so that they can stay here you know, for as long as mm -hmm. they decide to. Those are the two proposals. The priority, of course, is the roof replacement. Okay. Could, would you like to add anything on no, that? I okay. So if I could uh, ask a couple of questions, and I, I've done, I, I know, uh, the uh, I'm not sure what you pay in rent now. Could you yes. tell me what you pay in a monthly rent now? Yes, we're paying over four thousand dollars. We also the board. Jamie, you want to speak to that? What uh, what Gina found? Sure. In terms of that is a month. That is a month. I'm sorry, I'm asking my board member to speak on just an email we received the other day. We're working with People's Bank. Okay. And um, the uh, treasurer of the board has been the one interacting with People's Bank. Okay. Given today, or should I say last week, and the rate, what it is, um, given what the bank would require for the board um, to give as a down payment mm -hmm. um, and closing costs, our, the, the mortgage um, for it would be $1,900 and some odd cents. That is half of what we are paying for rent. The less we pay for rent, the more money that the board has, the agency has to be able to provide services. That's the intent, is, is to lower that amount. Okay, so let me, let me offer a, a little different version of a thought here. Please. Uh, and I'm glad you, these numbers are very, significant to me and I appreciate that uh, and I my one of my goals if possible would be to keep you on Main Street so uh, Thank you. both as an anchor in that area which needs an anchor uh, and just because of the long lasting things that have been done so uh, understand and I looked and I got a uh, report on what is being paid in property taxes so one of the things I would suggest to you and I want to encourage you to do I know you're a nonprofit, um, but I would encourage that we work out an agreement that if you get this, that we would work out a, a, a payment in lieu of taxes, or which would basically cover what we're getting so the city's not losing tax revenue uh, by doing that. Based on the numbers that you have there, you would still end up being uh, better off than you are now, and the city would be good having you where you are and also not losing any tax revenue. Uh, because you're a nonprofit, my expectation is it would have to be a payment of lower taxes. Should you get this, and should I still be in this office, I would uh, certainly want that to be part of the consideration. Uh, your thoughts on that? I mean, 
Because we pay rent, we have not been, I guess the taxes are included in that, but when you think about $1,900 versus $4,000, that's a significant difference. I am not in power, I don't have the authority right. to say of course, but I'm sure that Jamie will take it to the board Absolutely. and let them know that that would be a stipulation. Yeah. Yeah, you got five minutes, but yeah, that would, to me that would be, uh, I mean one of the things always a concern, and, and uh, I know City Council has it as a concern just trying to balance the budget and mm -hmm. uh, when we lose properties that we're tax paying um, for a variety of purposes and then we lose that tax revenue not only are we trying to provide services um, but our revenues are reduced to do that so if we can do this and be in a situation where um, that can be um, you know if you can say that yeah, we could definitely do that it was about fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars in, in property taxes just so you know but just based on your figures there that would take out of your $2,100 in savings, it would take about 1200 of it away, but you would still have $900 more each month uh, than you currently have. Uh, that's just a thought. Uh, I think uh, if that can be done, if the board would go along with that, I think that stipulation would be something uh, I know I would expect, I shouldn't say I know, that my city council colleagues would think, okay, we're maintaining, the, we got a pilot, we're maintaining the taxes, and we're providing stability down there. And if we can do that, uh, I think that makes yeah, a lot of sense. I can certainly bring that to the board and then communicate a response to you. Yes. Very quickly. Yes. yes. Uh, I would say within a few weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Uh, if that's we're possible. We're meeting next week, I believe. Okay. Because yep. uh, I, I would like to try to move the proposals. So I know there are things that need to get done. And if I can get them done ahead of time, I, you know, if I can get them done this fall instead of next spring, to me, that's a home run. So. Uh, but that that was one of the things that I was looking at, uh, and, and that was a concern because we just can't keep giving away taxes and not have something to replace it. So, uh, one one last thing, and I know you said you stopped the daycare program. Was that for funding purposes? Okay, is that was that funded by the state? Um, the state um, contributes very little. Um, we had uh, 36 children from infant to preschool, and the board made the decision to stop um, running the daycare because the deficit annually was over $60,000, oh, and they just said, yeah, we cannot continue yeah. to do this. We also fed the children. The USDA does, it gives very, very little back. We wanted to make sure that the children that we were servicing were having full breakfast, full lunch. Sure. If they didn't get a big dinner, it didn't matter. Um, but the board said we just couldn't do it anymore. And so that was a decision that okay. was made. Um, I think it was 2009, 2010 to stop running the daycare. We miss them, um, yes. but um, we needed to um, let it go. And later what we found was, um, in speaking to daycare centers that also have closed and those that have remained open, that unless you have 100 children plus, you will not break even. You will always run a deficit. Okay. So that was a learning curve for us. Do you okay. have any questions about our housing piece? Uh, the, well, other than I, I pretty much got a pretty good idea of it uh, in terms of the, I will call it, rental assistance, eviction assistance, uh, both legal and pro probably more legal and, and advising and some financial. Uh, but other than that, I, I don't. But, uh, you know, I, I know you prioritize and that's one of the things I try to do. So I'm trying to make sure that whatever I, whatever I decide after all the input I'm getting is going to have the most impact, both immediate and long term. So uh that's a balance that is going to be a difficult balance to put together but it's what i'm trying to do if we don't have a building then we can't help anyone anyway nope. and if we leave main street who knows where um yeah. we could end up but um that's the intent is this to stay on main street and continuing to provide services as best as we can depending on the funding that's made available and i know this is wrap but just last the last thing i am i heard you, your state funding is good through 2025? Yeah, um, okay. guaranteed contract um, is until 2025. Okay. And then it goes out to bid because that's okay. just a cycle. But okay. usually it's on an annual. Yep. And this year we were told we will go until 2025 okay. without any renewal. So as there long is long term stability. Yeah, as long okay. as we do the work. Okay. Well, first of all, I appreciate both of you coming. I appreciate all the things that Enlace has done. 
nothing personal, but I've known Betty a long time, and I appreciate all you've done for the community. I know where your heart is, and I thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you as a side note for the um, allowing the, the um, summer evening youth program to move forward. We've gotten a lot of good feedback, and last night um, people were just stopping and looking at the, um, yeah. it's not the electrical box, it's the traffic box, okay. and um, it's a victory theater uh, opening curtain, so we're excited about what is going on with and, the And that is on Cabot in Maine? Yes, sir. Okay. It's on Cabot and Main, and then there's one at one o'clock that's going on on Sargent and Main, and then um, maybe on the third, we yeah, we're ready in August. On August 16th, we'll do Mount Tom on Jackson and Main, and if Springdale Park at some point gets uh, revitalized, there's a box there that I've already tagged. Okay. All right. <laughs> thank, well, thank you all very much. Thank Take you. care. Thank Have you. a great rest of your day. Thank you very much.